Well, forging, of course, is uh, deformation in a solid state, and cold forging would be doing it at room temperature or near to room temperature. Uh, and the purpose of doing that is to save energy, for one thing, not to have to heat the material, but also the materials that you can cold forge uh, will then maintain those kind of dimensions once they are removed from the die. They are not going to heat up so much that they will be subject to shrink. Uh, that's, the, that's the primary reason to do it. High volume is, is uh, uh, typical for cold forging operations. The advantage of cold forging is, again, it's a savings of energy, so it's very efficient for high volume production. Uh, and you're going to get more accurate dimensions for those materials that can be cold forged because they are not going to shrink uh, in dimension as you would get if you had something heated to warm or a hot forging temperature. Warm forging is forging at an intermediate temperature between what you might consider room temperature, cold uh, forging, and hot forging, uh, what we think of as traditional forging temperatures. Typically, the idea is to stay below, in steel materials anyway, what, what's considered the scaling temperature, where oxides would begin to form on the outside surface of the part. And so, again, you're maintaining much uh, closer tolerances because you're not having to deal with scale. You're not dealing with full shrink from hot forging temperatures. So you're getting closer to uh, net shape that way. That means there's potentially no or less finishing. Now with hot forging, every material is going to have a different temperature range for what's considered hot, but the idea is that you've put the material into a thermal state that is, you're able to deform it most easily, most readily. So there are certain kinds of materials like very uh, high nickel chrome super alloys that really you cannot form uh, in, uh, in any other way. You really have to take them to these higher temperatures to form them. So that's the kind of thing that you see in hot forging. Now the other thing is that in comparison to all of these different processes, hot, warm, cold, there are different metallurgical characteristics that one will achieve by starting with those different temperatures. And in certain cases, one must start with hot forging temperatures in order to develop the correct microstructure. Well, the, the advantage of hot forging is going to be simply the ability to, to form certain kinds of materials that cannot be formed any other way. But even then, uh, if you were trying to forge them, and you might be able to forge them successfully at slightly lower temperatures, you might also destroy the tooling because the material is so, uh, literally at that temperature, is stronger than the tool you're trying to use. So. Uh, to preserve tooling is another reason to uh, extend temperature up higher so that you can actually get productivity out of the dyes.